Okay, so question two says block A of mass 8 kg is moving up on a frictionless surface inclined at 30 degrees. So highlight frictionless at 30 degrees. This block is connected to block B of mass 22 kg by a light inextensible cord that passes over a frictionless pulley as shown in the sketch below. Now 2.1 says why is it important that the cord must be light as well as inextensible? So we say the cord must be light and inextensible so that it doesn't interfere with calculations. Its mass and elastic force can be ignored. Then 2.2 says state Newton's law uh, of motion in weights. Now Newton's second law states that when a net force is applied to an object of mass, the object will accelerate in the direction of the net force where acceleration is directly proportional to the net force and inversely proportional to the mass of the object. Now 2.3 says draw a label free body diagram for block A. Now what are the forces acting in here? You can see that we have tension here and then obviously we'll have our normal force acting that way and our Fg perpendicular and our Fg parallel. So let's draw for that one. So first we can faintly draw the incline and then indicate the normal force. So we always know that the normal force must be perpendicular to the surface. And then down here we have the Fg perpendicular. So I am choosing to resolve my the components of weight because it it is it helps when it comes to calculations. And then here I have tension. So remember they said this is a frictionless uh, surface so there's no friction in here. And then how many forces do I have? It's three. So one, two, and this one's remember the components of weight so they will be marked as one. So it's either you have this free body diagram or you have this one here whereby you are not resolving. So if you choose not to resolve your your gravitational force it is still correct guys you can still have your free body diagram just like this right so this is your tension your normal force and your fg but then remember the advantage with this one is that when it comes to calculations you can clearly sh you can clearly see all your horizontal forces as well as all your vertical forces then uh 2.4 says calculate the magnitude of the acceleration of the blocks. Now with this one we can see that we do not have the tension connecting the two blocks together and we do not know the acceleration of the system. So we can see that this leads us to a simultaneous type of question and then we can even tell with the marks that we are given here 5 marks. So we do not have acceleration and tension that means we need to calculate this using simultaneous equations. So now um, calculating that one, we will obviously need the free body diagram for block B. So we can just indicate this is the gravitational force. And then up here we have tension. So the gravitational force will be larger than the tension because now we are seeing the system is going downward. As a result of the bigger mass here in B, this whole system will be uh, moving like this, so downward like this. So the Fg is bigger than the tension because now we are saying the system is moving downward as a result of the, gravitati the gravitational force meant to say being greater than the tension. So, okay, um, let's start with calculations. We can indicate that for block A, so starting with block A, for block A, what do we have? So consulting our free body diagram, we can see that this one will take the positive direction because uh, the, the, the block is being pulled up the slope. And this one will be negative because it is against the direction of motion. So positive for the direction of motion and negative for the opposite direction of motion. Okay, so now we will have our expression F net is equals to MA, our equation or the formula then um, this will be tension minus the Fg parallel as indicated there. So remember when calculating our F net, we are only considering the horizontal forces. 
because the vertical forces will obviously cancel out and this one remember it breaks down to mg uh, sine theta so we have mg sine theta ma then we can start substituting our mass is um so block a is 8 kg and then here we have 9.8 and this is sine um the angle is 30 degrees and then the mass is 8 and then we have a so calculating this we have um 39.2 is equals to 8a and then we can write it in form of um a t being the subject of the formula so we have 8a plus 89.2 so indicate this as equation number one and then let's see for block b so for block b again we have f net is equals to ma but considering block b we said the tension the, the fg will be bigger than the tension meaning the direction of motion is downward and this is the opposite direction of motion so our equation now should be fg minus t is equals to ma for block b and then fg we know this is mass times the gravitational acceleration so 22 times 9.8 minus t then here we have 22a then calculating this one we have 215.6 and then minus tension is equals to 22a and then this expressing this in terms of t we have 215.6 minus 22a is equals to t being the subject of the formula and then we can say equate equation one and two so i always like to equate them and then now since they are all equals to t we can say 81 plus 89.2 is equals to 215.6 minus 22a now we can bring whatever that has a to this side here so we will have 8a plus 22a is equals to 215.6 minus 39.2 so this side here we will have 30a and then this will give us um 176 so is equals to 176.4 then dividing both sides by 30 our a is equal to 5.88 meters per second square and that's your acceleration so awesome now 2.5 says how will the acceleration of the blocks be affected if um choose from increase decrease or remain the same if the mass of block a was increased so if they were in to increase the mass of this one uh, how would the, the acceleration be affected so for 2.5.1 we say the acceleration will obviously decrease right because now remember we'll be making it difficult for this one to accelerate downward right so this force this will be, will increase the tension force here and therefore the acceleration will have to decrease then 2.5.2 the mass of block b was increased so if we are increasing this mass here we are obviously supporting the fg here to bring this down and therefore the acceleration will increase so for 2.5.2 we say increases okay so now it says a rock of mass 5 kg is placed on the surface of the earth then 2.6 says state the universal law of gravitation in weights so let's run quickly to that free two marks and then newton's law of universal gravitation states that every other particle in the universe attracts every other particle with a gravitational force that is directly proportional to the magnitude of the product of their masses and inversely proportional to the square of the distance between their centers so that's how we are expected to define uh, this law then 2.7 says calculate the force exerted by the ad on the rock so the force exerted by the earth now to calculate this one we obviously need the formula that goes f is equals to g m1 m2 over r square now we know the g here is a constant 
and it's 6.67 times 10 to the exponent of 11 and then the mass the mass that we have is the 5 kg for the rock is it 5 yes and then we also have the mass of the earth because now they are saying the earth uh, exerts a force on this rock right then the mass of the earth can be found in the in the formula sheet or the data sheet it's 5.98 times 10 to the exponent of 24 it's a constant and then over the distance between them what's the distance and uh, there will be the distance uh, of the radius of the earth right so the radius of the earth is also can also be accumulated or can also be found from um the data sheet so having to calculate this one you just punch all this in your calculator and then the force exerted by the head on the rock will be 49 newtons so if you punch all this in your calculator you get 49 newtons also this can be calculated by simply saying f is equal to m times g whereby you can say the 5 and then times 9.8 it will also give you 49 tons so remember um we can calculate this by saying by, by referencing to the add so the add exits we, we can calculate the force exerted by the add on the rock or we can just calculate the force that the rock exerts on the add remember newton's dead law now 2.7.2 says calculate the gravitational acceleration on the surface of the earth now to calculate this one uh, we can also apply the formula that goes g is equal to gm over r squared and then we are obviously looking for the small g here and then the g here which is a constant is six point it's six point six seven times ten to the exponent of eleven and then here we have the mass uh, is 5.98 times 10 to the exponent of 24 and then um, the radius will obviously be the radius of the earth which is 6.38 times 10 to the exponent of 6 then we square that so let's write neatly So we have 6.38 times 10 to the exponent of 6 and then square. And then the g will be equal to 9.8 meters per second. This can also be achieved by saying f is equal to m times g. Remember, we already calculated the force from the previous question, so it's 49. And then the mass is 5. So if we are considering the rock and then divide both sides by 5, divide both sides by 5, the gravitational acceleration will still be 9.8 meters per second square.